Hello and welcome to this class of Principles of Macroeconomics. I am your teacher, Muhammad Nadeem Sarwar. Today, we shall discuss the downward sloping aggregate demand curve. We shall discuss its background, the definition of aggregate demand curve, its derivation. We shall also discuss why its slope is negative. We shall discuss its shifting factors and its mathematical derivation. So let's start with the lecture. Students, first we studied simple Keynesian cross. According to this, an economy is in equilibrium at a point where aggregate demand is equal to the level of output produced or to aggregate supply. Next, we studied the role of interest rate in aggregate demand and for that we introduced IS curve. Whereas, we introduced LM curve to understand the role of money market in the economy. From this model, we learned that for output and interest rate combination to be at equilibrium point, the aggregate demand should be equal to aggregate supply and money demand must be equal to money supply. It is important to note that during all these models, we assumed the price level to be given. That is, we assumed that price level is exogenously fixed. However, such an assumption could be valid only when the output is below the capacity of economy. In these conditions, for example, during the Great Depression, increase in output might not put upward pressure on the level of money wages given the high level of unemployment. Therefore, the cost of production will not increase with an increase in output. However, in normal conditions, an increase in output would put upward pressure on both wages and thus on price level. To study this phenomena, we introduce aggregate demand curve which shows the relationship between aggregate demand and the price level in Keynesian model. In other words, the aggregate demand curve gives the aggregate level of output demanded by each economic sector at each price level. To derive this, we examine how the position of IS and LM schedules and therefore of interest rate and income at which they intersect are affected by price changes. The level of output at which IS and LM schedules intersect for a given price level is a point on Keynesian aggregate demand schedule. Let's derive it with the help of diagrams. For this we use a set of two diagrams. In one of these diagrams we present ISLM model and therefore we have the interest rate on vertical and output level on horizontal axis. In the second diagram, we derive the aggregate demand curve. For that, we have price level on y axis and output level on x axis. Here again, the basic principle of drawing set of diagrams that is facing axis 
should have same variables holds here the economy is in equilibrium at even where is curve and lm curve intersect each other in other words at this interest rate and output level both goods and money market are in equilibrium we bring this level of output in next diagram and connect it with the level of price say p1 next we assume that price level falls from p1 to p2 this fall in price level means that real money supply has increased therefore lm curve shifts down or to the right the undercover process is that in response to increase in real money supply the real money demand should also increase to maintain the equilibrium in money market this happens through decrease in interest rate which causes speculative demand for money to increase and increase in buy which causes transactional demand for money to rise more details on this process can be found in already uploaded lecture with the title of simultaneous equilibrium and policy effectiveness coming back this decrease in interest rate because of fall in price level pushes up investment and consumption therefore the national income rises we bring this new level of output in second diagram and connect it with decreased price level at point b joining points a and b gives us aggregate demand curve students now that we have derived the aggregate demand curve let's look at the reasons for it to be negatively sloped there are three explanations for downward slope of aggregate demand curve first is called the pigo's wealth effect after the name of a famous classical economist mr pigo according to this a decrease in price level increases the purchasing power of wealth which is also called real wealth this increase in real wealth results in increasing the spending expenditures which translate into increasing aggregate demand or output level second is keynesian interest rate effect which is based on keynesian theory of liquidity preference or money demand according to this when price level decreases people need less money to purchase goods and services therefore their currency demand decreases which results in lowering the interest rate and thus increasing the investment this results in increasing the aggregate demand curve sorry this results in increasing the aggregate demand third explanation for downward slope of aggregate demand curve is bundle fleming's exchange rate effect according to this a decrease in prices in a country results in decreasing the interest rate in that country responding to a decrease in their reward capital owners put their capital capital owners pull their capital from that country and take it abroad where 
the interest rate is high. Because of this capital outflow, the real exchange rate decreases and therefore the net exports increase, which translate into increasing the aggregate demand or output level. It is also important now that the magnitude of aggregate demand curve slope depend on the slope of IS curve. The steeper the IS curve, the steeper the aggregate demand curve will be. Now let's discuss the shifting factors. Aggregate demand curve shifts to the right because of any factor that shifts IS curve to right or because of any factor that shifts LM curve downward. The factors that shift IS curve to right are whereas the factors that shift LM curve are Now let's discuss the mathematical derivation of aggregate demand curve. For this we first discuss the mathematical derivation of IS curve and LM curve. We know that IS curve is Y which is equal to C plus I plus G plus NX. Where C is and I is therefore and the final equation of IS curve is and the LM curve is money demand real money demand which is a function of interest rate and income and real money supply which is exogenously fixed at equilibrium real money demand should be equal to real money supply and this results in now we put the value of interest rate from LM curves equation into IS curves equation and this results in simplifying And finally, we get which this curve shows the negative relation between level of output and price level, which is aggregate demand curve. That's all for this lecture. In the next lecture, we shall discuss about aggregate supply curves. Post your questions in comments please consider subscribing the channel.